Hi, Dr. Jim Norman here. Today I want to talk about sesame B scans, clearly the most confusing uh, point of all parathyroid surgery for my patients is about their sesame B scans. They worry too much about sesame B scans. The sesame B scans have far too much importance. And I want everybody to understand several important things about sesame B scans. First of all, sesame B scans are never to be used to determine who does or does not have a parathyroid problem. Many parathyroid tumors don't show up on sesame B scans, so you can't determine if you do or do not have parathyroid disease based on a scan. They're not diagnostic scans. Second of all, you can't determine who should or should not have parathyroid surgery based on a scan. Thirdly, you can't determine who can have a minimally invasive parathyroid surgery versus a big traditional old parathyroid surgery based on a scan. We do mini parathyroid surgery on everybody, regardless of the scan. Lastly, don't get a scan. If you're going to come see us, we really prefer that you don't get a scan. It will waste your time. It will confuse you. It's oftentimes negative. You won't know what it means. It will confuse your doctors. It is going to cost you money and waste your time. If you're going to come to us, don't get a scan. If you're not coming here, you're going to have to get a scan somewhere else. Be smart. Understand your scan. Look at your scan yourself and make sure you can read it. You should be able to read your own scan. Let's look at three different examples of scans, how it's important to read your own scan, and how you should be able to understand your own scan and to tell the difference between a good scan and a bad scan. The first example we have is this scan right here. The scan should be very clean, crisp, and in focus. This particular patient came to us after already having a failed parathyroid operation, an operation that took several hours, didn't find the parathyroid tumor, and this is the scan that she had prior to her first operation. Notice it's blurry, it's not in focus, you can't even really see the thyroid gland. That same patient has, has the, the sesame B scan done by us, by our team. Of course, we do several thousand of these a year. That same, same scan, that same patient, look how clean and crisp it is, look how in focus it is. You clearly see the, the salivary glands, the butterflies, the thyroid, and the parathyroid tumor. So we've talked about some of this before. The parathyroid tumors can be anywhere in this big box. We've discussed that in the past. The butterflies, the thyroid, right there is this patient's parathyroid tumor. A clean, crisp, in-focus scan is what you're looking for. Let's look at another one. We'll do another example, and we'll learn some more. This is the second example of three that I'm going to show you. This is another patient that came to us for an operation who was previously operated on and they didn't find the parathyroid tumor. Almost six hours in the operating room. This is the scan they had. As you see, it's out of focus, it's blurry, it doesn't show a thing. There's no useful information on this. That same patient has a scan by us and here's, here's what this scan should be. Clean, crisp, in focus. Again, salivary glands, thyroid, and here's the patient's parathyroid tumor, this black spot here, right there. Easily seen on every single x-ray. All right, salivary gland, salivary gland, parathyroid tumor, thyroid gland. So you have to have a good, clean, crisp sesame B scan. You should be able to look at it. If it looks like a bunch of blurry blobs, it's not useful to you, and it's not useful to your doctors. Let's get one more example. This is the third and final example of a sesame B scan and what to look for, what not to look for. All these blurry pictures are, this is called SPECT scanning, S-P-E-C-T. It's not a very good technique. We never use this technique. It's not good. We have gave up on this over a decade ago. As you can see, you've got a series of, a series of pictures, all of which are blurry, there's no useful information here. This same patient, this patient was told they had a negative scan, therefore they can't have surgery. We don't know where the tumor is. Same patient came to us as an appropriate, uh, appropriate scan. Very easy, very simple. This scan took 15 minutes. And you see very clearly head and neck. Here's the parathyroid tumor, a large, very obvious parathyroid tumor. You don't have to be a radiologist to read this x-ray. It's very simple. Everybody can see that tumor. What you need is a good quality scan. So in summary, sesame B scans 
are never to be used to determine who does or does not have a parathyroid tumor. This, this patient here was told that we can't have an operation because we don't know you even have a tumor. They have a tumor, they just have a worthless scan. So scans can't be used to determine if you have a tumor or you don't have a tumor. Scans cannot be used to determine who can have a mini operation or who can have a big operation. Scans are just a tool. Make sure you look at your scan, make sure you can understand your scan. If you can't read it, nobody can read it. I wish you the best. Thank you.